Let me start recording. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming. We're a little bit more intimate setting, so that's really nice. Everybody can know everybody. And this is, I guess, a, a, an inaugural meeting. I don't even know if they ever actually met in the original group. So um, this is really special for me, being a part of something from the very beginning. So um, I appreciate each of you guys being here. Um, but uh, who, like, we've been talking about Twitter before I started recording, but who here would say that they're on Twitter, but they wanna, they wanna be more active? Everybody here, I'm sure. Um, and if you're not following me, please do so. I'm at Techie Elliot, and I can share a link to my Twitter account <laughs> in the Discord channel. I'll do that after the talk. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, the talk will be kind of informal because we're just like everybody's here. We're just uh, looking at my screen. But um, when I originally created this. Uh, chat it was um, 19 or 3 19, 19 and so it made me think of the fact that it's a hundred years since the end of World War II and if you consider what media was like a hundred years ago you would see something like this in the newspaper during the end of World War not World War II but World War One sorry excuse me and we've come a long way since then and if you think about 50 years ago, this is what media looked like 50 years ago. It looked something like this. And I should be connected to this for our sound. Let me connect again. Sorry about that. Well, that's not very loud. I was trying to get connected to my speaker up there. This is the moon landing. Um, the volume's not very loud. But as you can tell, 50 years ago, television was the main means of um, of media at that time. So if we consider 25 years ago, um, this is a show, and they have a very interesting guest. I thought it was interesting in the sense that he shares this. So you may have to turn your volume up on, on yours so that you can hear it. And everybody might echo a little bit, but just bear with me. go to a gentleman here who wants to make a comment and then we're going to look at some uh, technology, some pictures and video of technology. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, adding some substance to what he's talking about. I'm the uh, internet service provider here in Dallas, Texas. And well, wait a minute. For, before you say that, you, you've got to tell us before we look at this video, what is an internet? Would you mind just you know sharing that with us for, for, the, for the four or five people who don't know what an internet is, would you tell us? Um, the internet obviously is the uh, uh, nationwide network of networks communication. And to this day, more than 60% of the traffic on the internet is email. So it's value added service and the blending of the technologies that you're referring to. And everybody eventually in this country, will everybody be somehow hooked into an internet in the next five, 10, 15 years? Yeah, uh, if we have anything to do about it, yes, I will. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, thank you. Right. Let me go ahead and ask. Yeah, so our understanding of what the internet is and how it is changing our lives is, is, has been really changing over the many years since then. And uh, obviously, media has changed to what it is today. And, um, you know, the internet, or uninternet, the internet has changed everything. So, uh, we, we've gone from not even knowing what the internet was to how to even talk about it. 
I just got started, so you haven't missed much. I've just been talking about what uh, what is media, what uh, what media has been. Yeah, you can sit there. What media is, what media has been for the past hundred years, and um, I'm sharing screens with everybody. If you'd like to follow along, I posted a link in the in the Discord channel. Oh, it's okay. I'm sure. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really over here so you can see a screen. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get it on my TV, but um, the live stream wasn't working properly. Yeah. So I couldn't. I couldn't get the technology to work. But um, since the advent of the internet, everything has changed, and since the advent of social media, we could say it's changed even more. So take a take a, a view of this uh, this video. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Activity presentation, but I gave this presentation earlier in the year, but I, I recaptured it so that we could together learn how the why, the how, and the where to start at Twitter for web developers. Um, and my objective with this talk is to bring as much value as I can and share that with you and just give away as many of the Twitter gems as I have um, to help you in your journey as a web developer, whether you're uh, mid-level to senior level, junior or, or mid, mid to senior level developer, or you're just getting started. Uh, you know, I'm just getting started but I found massive value just from being engaged on Twitter. And uh, I wouldn't be here if it, weren't, if it weren't for Twitter or social media. So that's the why um, for me. Uh, my story begins, I guess, with social media back in, you know, I, I was probably one of the early adopters of things like Facebook and Twitter 
in 2005 through, you know, 2015, I used all those social media platforms. And then in 2015, I just, I just decided I would leave social media. So I was no longer a part of any community. I got off all of the social media platforms. And uh, one of the reasons is because of family. Uh, I just, I felt the pressure of like, I just had a baby and um, things that I was posting. Uh, I was catching a lot of flack for, uh, you know, posting this or that. My wife, you know, wasn't comfortable with me posting this or that. And so I just, you know, that was one of the reasons I got off. Uh, I didn't trust Zuckerberg. So I was like, he's got all my information. Um, I'm just going to get off while I can. So I don't share anything else on there. Uh, I felt intrusive. Uh, I felt consistently unproductive. Like, why am I wasting my time with this? Uh, it's such a distraction. I was just fed up. I was fed up with the noise. I was fed up with, you know, things coming in my feed that I didn't know why they were coming up. And uh, so I just got off all of social media. Uh, but in November of 2018, I returned. But why? Uh, I returned because I was motivated after having learned what I've learned up to that point and about what web development was. I learned that there was a, a desire that I should be on uh, social media. And I didn't care what people said. I stopped caring. Um, I decided that it was too important to not be involved in the community and that I should share my story that I should contribute to the community at large, and that I should be involved. Um, and I like to have fun. So uh, when you know I'm enjoying something, I just enjoy to share it. Um, who knows who this guy is on the screen that, I'm, that I've got shared? What's his name? Gary V. Gary V. Um, I would say he is the one guy that uh, caused me to, I guess, reconsider why I was off of social media and why I should get back on social media. Uh, he had a, a video that uh, he engaged with this girl. Uh, she's, her name, I think her name is Lindsay, uh, but she was just one of his guests. And I recommend going back and watching this. It's a full video that's very long, but it's how one video can change your life. And I think I watched this back in October, or November, and uh, it just caught my attention. It's a really long video, but he's basically pressing her on why um, she's intimidated by Kylie Jenner's Instagram and her success. Mm -hmm. And um, why, why, why should Kylie Jenner matter was really what he was trying to get to at, at why she does the things that she does. Uh, and uh, he said, I figured I would stick onto this deep enough for a couple more minutes to pull you through instead of you being on this high for 36 hours and then going back to Instagram BS in 48 hours. And then she says, I need to deactivate that. <laughs> and he says, no, you need discipline to put it in the proper bucket. And she says, yeah, I feel like I hold myself on this pedestal. I keep crippling myself with the things I'm doing there. And he says, of course. So you're playing a fake narrative instead of putting in the work to pull it off. You guys had kind of mentioned that earlier, like people put in the work. And then this was the kicker that just like, it got me. It was, he said, you're wishing instead of executing. And so for me, that was like deep reflection, like, okay, like, I got to stop wishing to be a developer. I've got to stop wishing that um, I could make a difference in this world. I've got to stop wishing that. I've just got to go do it. I've got to go work. I've got to go put in the time, whatever it takes. I've got to chase this. Like I'm motivated. Uh, so that's a part, the huge part of my story. And in November of 2018, I came out off of my three year drought off of, all social media. This is my first Facebook post in a long time. And, uh, but I'm, I'm not here to talk about Facebook. And the reason is, is because Facebook doesn't have 
influencers like Quincy Larson, who say things like this. He said, build your skills, build your reputation, build your network. Your success depends on all three of these. Don't make the mistake of fo focusing on only one or two. Think about ways you can build all three at the same time. And not only that, he engages with people who ask him questions or say things. So here's an example right here. He's engaged with somebody just out of the blue. Here's another person. And it goes on and on and on. But, and I've had him respond to me as well. But Twitter is uniquely primed because it has web developer influencers like Quincy Larson and the people of Free Code Camp, those influencers that they engage with code newbies to senior developers. It doesn't really matter where you are on the spectrum of learning. That Twitter, Twitter is, it's just a positive place for web developers in general. And the people that are trolls, they get smoked out. Mm -hmm. And the people that are positive, they, they rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And people um, you know, have, have come to give those people lots and lots of respect. And I think that's a huge reason why Free Code Camp is what it is today is because of the work and execution that Quincy Larson and, and people like him have done. Uh, this is uh, another influencer, his name is Ruben Harris, but he says people have now spent more than 1 billion minutes using Free Code Camp. That's the equivalent of 2,000 years. And they get more visits than Codecademy and Udacity with a budget of $200,000. So uh, that's amazing that they could be that small of a budget, yet they reach more than these for-profit companies um, and they've had over a billion minutes of people using their content. And then there's small things like there's this uh, organic group that I just learned about at the end of December. It's called W3 Develops. And it was just this random guy <laughs> that posted this, this tweet and I discovered this that I could learn with a group of people how to code and we would spend hours in the day learning how to code in the month of January and we completed the first certificate in Free Code Camp during one month or less. It was actually, I think, 23 days and I could have finished it faster. I took a few days off in there. So uh, I discovered, you see my little picture there, but um, I was one of those people that replied to that message because I was no longer wishing. I was executing and I was on a mission. I was putting, I was putting Twitter in the proper bucket that this was my mode, my means of becoming a developer was being engaged on this community. Um, I tweeted this one question. It said, what would you say? But I, I tagged a bunch of people that are influencers that I've connected with personally. And that tweet alone had 20,000 plus impressions. So I'm a nobody yet. There was 20,000 plus engagements on a tweet where I just asked a question and it was related. I think it was related to a treehouse question. Like, what would you say, you know, to a junior developer who's just getting started or something like that. Um, so you, with Twitter, you can analyze how many people are engaging your stuff. Like this is me telling my Twitter story. Like what is my story of my life? And um, it's basically gotten me, you know, well over 7,000 impressions. Um, but this tweet, uh, not this tweet, but this story, um, I'd recommend going to read this article. Um, uh, and Gary V, uh, obviously somebody that's an influencer for me, he said, the internet is the middleman and you now have more opportunity than ever to tell your story in a way that matters or a way that makes sense and can resonate with people around the world. So we have a huge opportunity and social media, but especially Twitter is our means to tell our story as developers and uh, one of his major encouragements is 
even if you haven't made it yet, you should document your process. Uh, like what, what is the thing that you're learning today and document that. Uh, like Andrew and I, we've been studying together and we've been learning together and I've been recording those sessions, but I'm not necessarily trying to, I'm not like a lot of people have the, the misconception that <laughs> you should try to get as many followers as possible. And that's not my goal. My goal with Twitter is to bring value to the community. But on top of that is to document my process and where I'm at in my learning so that when I have made it, I can go back and I can look at, hey, I was there back in January or in May, I was there, you know? And then when I do eventually make it as a, a full-fledged web developer, then I'll be able to look back and say, man, like I've come so far because I was documenting my process. And, I, and that can inspire people because then I can say, look, I was here where you are and you can do it too. You, you can, if I can do it, you can do it. You just need to execute. So how do I use Twitter? I've, I've come from, when I came back, I think I had like maybe 30 or 40 followers. And now I have well over 700 plus followers. And I, and I, I tweet on a regular basis. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a lot of my tweets and how I use Twitter how I get engagement and I follow some simple rules, but these rules can be followed by anybody and they can be used for you in your journey. Like what, what do you want to learn? What do you want to grow in? How do you want to become you? How do you want to have a voice? Um, I would say you can do that. Experiment, use whatever means you can, but I don't know it all, but, I just try to share with you guys what I do now. Um, a lot of people say like, Twitter, isn't that just a bunch of mentions and hashtags? That's it, right? You know, that's the formula. If you just, you know, mention a bunch of people and use the hashtags. Uh, a lot of people kind of dumb it down to that's all it is. Um, here's another joke. It says, the art of the retweet. And uh, it's Michael Scott. And this guy is poking fun at Michael Scott. He's saying, this is literally what a retweet is. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And he quotes Wayne Gretzky and it's Michael Scott quoting Wayne Gretzky. But he's saying that's his quote, you know? So that's kind of like his poking fun. The office was poking fun at, you know, what a retweet would be is what Eli is saying. But it's more than that, really. Um, and I follow some simple guidelines. I always advise people Speak your truth, find your voice. What is it that you wanna say? What is it that you uh, have to say? Speak that. Don't be something that you're not. Don't, um, you know, don't, um, don't BS. Identify who is your tribe. I'm gonna go through something to help you find your tribe, but I'm so glad that all of you are here because you're part of my tribe and like I'm just like, it's ecstatic that we've developed uh, more of a community and the community is only going to grow more. And I'm just excited that you guys are along, along the ride with me. Um, you know, a lot of times <laughs> I reach out to people either on Twitter and I've had a virtual relationship, but I hadn't really had a lot of in-person relationships. So it's really cool that um, social media has come out of social media and now it's in the physical world now. And it's just, it's really cool. It does. It does. Um, but I would also encourage you offer whatever value you have offered away for free daily. I do that every day. I have something of value. I give it away. I don't, I don't say like, Oh, they need to give me money or like they, they need to pay me for my time or, you know, they will I would agree. I would agree. I would say the more you give away, the more you receive. Like, and I, I, everyone loves a giver, you know? So like, I like to be the giver. I like to give away whatever value I have. Like I don't hoard that for myself because it's just too good to keep it. It's just too good. I'm not, I'm not going to just keep everything from uh, the community. Uh, and then as much as I can help it, I ask for nothing. Like, 
I give and I don't ask for anything in return. If I happen to get something in return, I'm happy. I mean, that's cool. But that's not my goal. My goal is not to get something in return from the people that I'm giving to. My goal is to give to you and that it helps you. Um, yes, I would say use hashtags and mentions. <laughs> you definitely need them. I'm going to go through how you use them in an organic and helpful way. Uh, yes, use likes and retweets. Um, that is the proper way to use Twitter. But there's a, there's a, a method to it. Um, and with your tweets, invite the reader. Uh, I come from a journalism background. So I was trained in typography and how to structure language and, um, you know, you, you know, kind of create a way to invite the reader in terms of like using simple language at first or, you know, whatever kind of a catchy way of, of catching their uh, attention, but use creativity to do that. And uh, each of the people in this room are uber creative. I, I know that without a doubt, each of you have your own special way of connecting with the audience or whoever you want to read your, your tweets or engage with you. But um, then like I would give each of you guys a thumbs up because each of you guys have engaged with the real world. You showed up, you know, like that's huge. And I would say engage with, with the other meetups, engage with, um, and as many real world people engage with them, like take people out to lunch, uh, you know, go like study with some person from, from this group. Yeah. Like go, go to Sodan's mastermind, uh, you know, take, take off work to go to it or like take off time, like do, do whatever you got to do. Uh, but be engaged and, uh, just be sure to, uh, engage with people on Twitter to the point that you can get a direct message with them. And it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation so that they know that you care about them, not for the sake of public but like being in public and the conversation being aired out, but that you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them because you just want to get to know them and you care about them. It's relational. Um, a lot of people fail to do that or they fail to, uh, have a one-on-one -on -one connection with anybody. They just all out on social media or they're so introverted that they, you know, maybe have a small circle of people that they're individually connected to, but nobody else. But I, I think both those are wrong. You should be somewhere in the middle where you have lots of connections outside, but then you also have individual conversations with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So speak your truth. What does that mean? Um, comment from your experience with authenticity. So don't fake it until you make it. If you're a beginner, embrace that you're a beginner. That's fine. I'm a beginner. Uh, I'm going to continually be a beginner until I make it. <laughs> like, and even when I make it, I, I probably will still be a beginner in a lot of ways. Um, when you speak your truth, that smokes out the BS. Like if you've got BS on your Twitter and you're like, you know, the people that really know you will smoke you out. Um, and a lot of people don't do this, but I highly encourage, use a real photo of yourself on your Twitter. Like, I think most everybody here has a real photo of themselves. So, you know, kudos to you guys. But there's a lot of people that hide behind avatars and all these weird things. But I would highly discourage doing that because at the end of the day, you want your Twitter to connect with you personally. And also you want people to identify that your picture is you in real life, because when they see you in real life, you want them to be able to connect that with, Oh, you're, you're the Elliot from Twitter, or you're the Sheree from Twitter, or you're the Andrew developer from Twitter, you know, or you're whoever, you know, like Sodan, you know, like you're Sodan from Twitter. Um, and I've, I've had people come up to me and say, say that they said, Oh, you're, you're the Elliot from Twitter. Um, you know, try as much as possible, use your real name. Uh, so a lot of people use, sorry, that's uh, my wife's has, has her text messages connected. A lot of people would say, said I'm from Instagram. <laughs> yeah. You must use it a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's no shame in recognizing that maybe you like a certain social media better uh, or that you have connections that are better 
uh, on other platforms, but uh, I'd highly encourage you use your real name uh, and especially offer meaningful comments. Like if there's a way that you can connect with somebody on Twitter and they've asked a question and they're seeking feedback, if whether they're an influencer or they're a code newbie or whoever, you know, offer something meaningful to them. Don't just like blah, 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 boring, boring. You know, like try to think through like what, what is this person really asking and how can I really help them? <laughs> now I say identify your tribe, bring value daily and be positive. Um, I would encourage you research the hashtags that are the most popular or the most used by influencers in the web development community. Take note of which hashtags they use. Uh, there are certain hashtags that people have just made up and nobody uses them. But then there's other hashtags that people actually use and they are a, like a legitimate hashtag that's recognized by Twitter and it's kind of promoted. So I would take note of that. Research the influencers that are in the web development space. There's certain ones like um, there's the JavaScript teacher, there's um, uh, Quincy Larson, there's several. I mean, um, you know, you can find ones that you certainly connect with, like there's a Wes Boss or uh, there's the, uh, the JS Tuts. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people there that um, you can find that they share a lot of good information on Twitter for free. And that's the beauty of it, is it for free? And they just share all their information for free uh, that, that people often pay lots and lots of money for, but we can, we can get it for free if we just watch our Twitter. Yeah. Um, That's where I find the majority of the stuff I use from code. Exactly. Um, did you learn? Yeah. Really There's That's so much, high. so much information. Just people are just sharing it for free. Uh, and I'd say engage with authenticity. Like, Engage those people, engage those influencers. You know, ask them a question. Be bold enough to ask them a question. Um, you know, I, I've known a lot of people that they just like ghost people on social media. That means they don't engage really. They just, you know, they just, maybe they'll give a like or a retweet every now and again, but they never actually type in a question or ask anybody anything. Oh, what? Southern hello. Right. <laughs> um, I would encourage you to go into your DM settings and make sure that they're not, um, I've forgotten actually what it actually is, but you need to open up your DMs because there's default, it's defaulted to be closed. So that means if it's closed, then someone cannot DM you. <coughs> they, have to, <laughs> they have to be DM'd by you. They cannot DM you directly. Uh, likewise, I know Sheree was talking about the fact that she has a private account, but I'd highly encourage you make your, make your account I'm public. Actually, I've been saying I'm not yeah. Make, make it public because. Or alternately you can have one that shuts for your close friends and you can have a public place. Yeah. If necessary. Yeah. I, I would encourage you, you know, try not to live a dual life, but if you feel like you need to do that for privacy sake, go ahead. Uh, but um, I'm just telling you from my experience, I've ditched any, any means of that because I just want to be one me, one authentic me. And I want to focus on whatever I share. Nobody has to question, am I being my private self or my public self? I'm always just being Elliot. And I never want that ever to be in question. Um, and follow the, your real mentors like JC Hyatt or uh, Matt Cox is one that I follow. So damn, these guys are mentors to me. They're friends to me. So I follow them. Um, uh, Nader Dabit, he spoke at Magnolia JS. He's a huge mentor for me. Um, there's several that I know in real life that they've become mentors for me. Uh, a lot of the speakers that I met at Magnolia JS, they're, they're people I consider as mentors. Um, and I wasn't shy about connecting with them. You know, I made sure that, hey, I, I'm Elliot, like you should know who I am. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm just nobody, but hey, like I, I make my presence known whether by leaving a meaningful comment or 
promoting something that they're promoting or answering like they want feedback from code newbies so i give them feedback from my perspective um but here's an example uh i connected with a mentor um and uh, i had been like just heaping lots of value on him and then eventually he approached me with an egghead subscription for free and it was really touching because i wasn't expecting i never asked him for anything and he just went out of his way to say hey i've got a free subscription would you like to have it because i know you're learning a lot and you you could use it and so he gave that to me for free for a year and that was huge for me because that was a huge inspiration i haven't used it a whole lot i've used it some but uh I actually have it. If you would like access to it, I would gladly share it with you. I share it with Andrew. I gladly share it with you because I know he gave it to me to use, but I feel like I didn't really earn it. So I'm happily sharing it with everybody that's here. Um, sorry, this uh, was supposed to be hidden, but there's also things like internships that come available. Um, there was this internship that came available on Twitter and it was posted and there was like, I think I shared this when it was like 35 likes, but it ended up being like over a thousand people responded to this. And I think they ended up having so many people respond to that internship that, uh, they, they probably got really overqualified people. But, um, I'd also recommend reading this article, uh, from, uh, I think her name's April. But uh, you can follow her at Vogue and Code. And her article is How to Find a Job on Twitter. But uh, she gives a lot of Im good information. Um, I can show that the, there's the link there, but <laughs> I would definitely encourage you to look that up. And then I'd say engagement. Definitely use hashtags and mentions and retweets and likes and oh my, you know, like <laughs> that's a lot. But, uh, you know, but. Seek to bring value first. Like, don't focus on, um, you know, I'm just going to, like, throw a bunch of them on there and then just see what happens. Um, I've done that before, and there's mixed, like, responses from that. Sometimes people get upset that, oh, I'm, like, the prisoner to the massive mention tweet, and they're not happy about that. But um, <clears throat> then I've seen, like, you know, massive response from a lot of influencers too. Uh, definitely ask questions, engage with authenticity. But at the end of the day, you really wanna to try to get an individual conversation with an influencer or somebody that can really help you, like a mentor. Um, I'd encourage you to structure your tweets. Um, you know, definitely make it appealing to the eye in, in the sense that there's a lot of white space. So leave a margin. Uh, use links and pics because links and pics oftentimes the link will have a card on it and a card will post like this amazing looking picture and you never had to do any work all you have to do is just post the link but it'll expand the real estate of your tweet which I'll show in my next video uh, definitely ask a question but the end goal is that you want your tweet to evoke some kind of response from your reader um, Here's an example of how I use space in a tweet. Uh, you can see like there's some white space in it. Uh, but I invited the reader by just saying, this is a fantastic read. Uh, and I mentioned a friend specifically because I knew that she was looking into this, like what is DevRel? And I provided a lot of white space. So I used enters to give some space between different words. I also, you notice how the real estate of the tweet, it takes up a lot of space. Notice the height vertically that I mentioned hashtags that are mentioned in, mixed into the text like DevRel. And then at, at different times, you can carbon copy people in your tribe. So I've carbon copied JC Hyatt, uh, you know, a few other people that I knew they would appreciate reading that article too. Use the links with the cards for photos. So I posted that one link to dev.to and it gave us that beautiful picture that 
Matter Dabbit found and he posted it on his blog. And then I could reuse that because I posted a link. So with that tweet, I, this tweet here, I got 4,000 impressions, but a lot of it came because I used this hashtags and I asked a question and it drew people in. Um, here's another engagement that I had with Wes Boss. I just like noticed something about his tweet and I responded to it. And then I got this response from Wes Boss. He said, oh, you're right. That screenshot was from Markdown and not from my JS view. This is what it should be. So I, I brought value to Wes Boss and he responded back with, you're right. So that was really cool. But what's the takeaway? Uh, but the other thing I would say is um, use the hashtags. Um, but research, research 10 hashtags over the next period of time and find the ones that people are using that, you know, maybe you pick like five hashtags that maybe for the next week or so, you make a concerted effort to use those. And then with 10 influencers, you research 10 influencers that are making an impact in the web development field. And you try to uh, engage with those people using their, the hashtags that they're using and engaging with them by mentioning them or responding to something that they're doing. Um, you know, be authentic. Like don't, don't like kiss up and like try to like be a brown noser, but I don't know, just bring like, actual value like hey like i like admire what you're doing you're doing something really cool you know how can i help those kind of things uh, but offer you know 10 tweets replying to those influencers over the next week uh you know how can you engage with that that those influencers you know do that for the next week and then repeat that approach you know each day in the week and Keep the momentum going with how you're using your social media. And I would say, you know, figure out what, <coughs> what it is that you can do on your other platforms. But, you know, don't let it be a distraction. But at the same time, put it in the right bucket. Use the discipline that you need to do to make it something that you can leverage for your career, like for you as a web developer. Uh, find things that are helpful, like the 100 days of code is one hashtag that is really good. Uh, community it's very positive very encouraging uh, this is the free code camp Jackson Mississippi meetup so uh, we could probably come up with our own hashtag um, but there is the free code camp hashtag I would encourage using that um, all together yeah free code camp is one word and it's a I really just start type, I just hashtag start typing in free and then I usually just tab at free and it ends up being free code camp. Yeah. But uh, you should get some options when it pops up and then you can just select it. But that's the end of my talk. But I'd encourage you, you know, go show the world that Twitter is more than just a bunch of mentions and hashtags. And you could definitely do a lot better at Twitter than me. Exactly. <laughs> It's more than just trolls, but uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, I know we've gone kind of long, but uh, test out your Twitter skills. You know, I would say try to find something that's trending, like a trending topic, um, or you know, can you come up with an interesting way to incorporate free, the free code camp hashtag and learn in public hashtag. That's one that I've been using recently. I'm planning to use it more because I recognize that you want to find a hashtag that's going on the rise in popularity because if you're using it when it's early in the stage of popularity and it's only gaining in popularity, then you'll be somebody that's recognized within that community as kind of an early adopter and that people will see that, Hey, like this is somebody that brings value to the community. I should follow them. So you kind of become an influencer in a way. But that's the why, the how, and the where to Twitter and to document your process. <laughs> and I look forward to encouraging you guys on your journey. But. Very good. I, I mean, I don't really do this, but it's more like here and the open information. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, experiment. Like, I would say maybe try like, if you've not done any of these things and you're just like kind of graduating from, I just give likes and retweets, then I would say, you know, start slow. Like try maybe not so many things, like maybe focus in one area and just see like what kind of feedback <laughs> you get from specific influencers that you really look up to. Uh, like I never imagined I would get to talk with Quincy Larson like in person, but I recently got to talk with him on a phone and I was just like, man, like this is the coolest thing in the world. I totally look up at this guy, but he's a really humble dude. Like he doesn't, he doesn't really act like he's like, like the most important person in the world. Just you just tweet us. Good. But, uh, yeah, but uh, I would definitely say, you know, start small and um, she got influencers and everything. Oh nice. I've deleted my Twitter quite a few times. I remember asking why I only talked about so I I kind of went through at an Elliot moment, I believe, some years or two years back, like three years ago. Yeah. yeah. It happens. I mean, um, you get burned out or you feel like, man, like, what's the point? You know, like, but there's all these, like, trolls out here and, like, or, like, I don't know, you kind of get to a point where you think, like, man, like, everybody's just out to get me or, like, this is not a good thing anymore. But anyhow, I appreciate everybody coming for the recording and uh if you're watching this after the fact, uh, thank you. Please uh, join our community. Uh, you can always contact me at Techie Elliot. That's Elliot with E L I O T. Please connect with me, and uh, I would love to get you connected, especially if you're in the Jackson area. You can come to one of our next meetups. We're hopefully going to be in another venue. Uh, this is just a temporary spot at my house. But uh, if you'd like to join our community, please contact me. I would. Love nothing more than to connect with you and uh, have you come to our future meetups. But uh, thank you for joining. Thank you.